Hello student, we are going to start the session. It is module 1, lecture 3, satellite communication, MECE 106A, Shongita Roy, Assistant Professor, Narulan Institute of Technology, Electronics and Communication Engineering Department. This is the content, orbital perturbation. There are two types of orbital perturbation. Now what is orbital perturbation? Orbital perturbation are, though we are following Keplerian law, but there are some other forces that is always acting along the Keplerian forces. These perturbations are the perturbation of gravitational origin which derive from a potential and for which total energy is conserved. The non-gravitational perturbation that do not derive from potential and that are dissipating energy that is to atmospheric drag, solar radiation pressure, they are sometimes called surface forces since they depend on satellite surface characteristics that is to area to mass ratio, aerodynamic coefficient effectivity properties etc. These are the figures showing how it is affecting the satellite and how the forces acting on satellite. There are moon, sun, earth, the forces acting on satellite. There is also other celestial bodies around the satellite. Now, the irregular gravitational force around the earth due to nonlinear Uniform distribution magnetic field to cause orbital perturbation. Main external perturbations come from sun and moon. When a satellite is near to these external bodies, it receives stronger gravitational pull. Low orbit satellites get affected due to friction caused by collision with atoms and ions. Solar radiation pressure affect large geosatellites which use large solar arrays. Self-generated torque and pressures caused by RF radiation from the antenna. Most satellites use a propulsion subsystem in order to maintain a proper spin along axis direction and control the attitude of the satellite against perturbation forces. Look angle. Look angle can be divided into two parts, azimuth angle, elevation angle. And the maximum gain of the earth station antenna can be directed at satellite and we can calculate this as follows. Now the angle between the local horizontal plane passing through the earth station and satellite and center of earth is called as azimuth angle. The formula is given by this and this is the azimuth angle. Now the elevation angle, the angle between the vertical plane and line of pointing to satellite is known as elevation angle and this is governing by this formula where the picture shows the elevation angle. Orbital period. Already we have discussed in the earlier classes the what is orbital period. Orbital period is a time a given astronomic object takes to complete one orbit around another object and applies in astronomy usually to planets or asteroids orbiting the sun, moon, orbiting planets and exponents orbiting other stars or binary stars. For objects in the solar system this is often referred to as Sidereal period determined by 360 degree revolution of one celestial body around another that is to the earth orbiting the sun. The term sidereal denotes that the object returns to the same uh, position relative to a fixed other position or star projected in the sky. When describing orbits of binary stars the orbital period is usually referred to as just the period. For example, Jupiter has a sidereal period of 11.86 years while the main binary star Alpha Century AB has a period about 79.91 years. According to Kepler's third law, the orbital time period is calculated by this where A is the orbital semi-major axis, mu is the gm is the standard gravitational parameter, g is the gravitational constant, m is the mass of the body. For calculating the distance where a body has to orbit in order to have a given orbital period, A is given 
by this equation where a is the orbital semi-major axis, g is the gravitational constant, m is the mass of the body, t is the orbital period. Now orbital, uh, now this orbital velocity is given by this animation. Now forces acting on satellite, it is the centripetal force, already we have discussed earlier and this is the centrifugal force. When these two forces are equal and opposite, then a body is moving around another body. Orbital velocity is given by this, V is equal to square root of Gm by R. R is the distance from satellite to the center of the earth. Now orbital inclination. Orbital inclination measures the tilt of an object or around a celestial body. It is expressed as the angle between reference plane and the orbital plane or axis of direction of the orbiting object. Coverage angle, a measure of the portion of the surface of earth visible to a satellite taking the minimum elevation angle into account. Now the slant range, in radio electronics especially radar terminology, slant range is the line of sight distance along a slant direction between the two points which are not at the same level relative to a specific data. An example of the sand is the distance to an aircraft flying at a height altitude with respect to that of the radar antenna. The slant range 1 is the hypotenuse of the rectangle represented by the altitude of the aircraft and the distance between the radar antenna and the aircraft ground track. Here it is denoted by point 3. So this is the slant range. Placement of satellite in geostationary orbit. Low earth orbiting satellites are directly injected into their orbits. This cannot be done in case of geo as they are to be positioned 36,000 36, km above the earth's surface. Launch vehicles are hence used to set these satellites in their orbits. These vehicles are reusable. They are also known as Space Transportation System STS. When the orbital attitude is greater than 1200 km, it becomes expensive to directly inject the satellite in its orbit. For this purpose, a satellite must be placed in a transfer orbit between the initial lower orbit to destination orbit. The transfer orbit is commonly known as Hohmann transfer orbit. These are the references. Thank you. This is all of the day. Bye-bye. We will be in the next classes. Thank you.